Hi, welcome to section three. In the last section, we learned all about higher order functions and how passing functions into and out of other functions can help us write more generalized and reusable code. In this section, we'll be looking at partial application and currying. Our higher order functions will get a lot easier to write and a lot more powerful after we learn to take control of function application. These can be tough concepts to take in at first, but when that aha moment comes, you'll have an entirely new outlook on working with JavaScript. You should feel a bit like Alice, putting your arms through the looking glass and realizing there's another side to this world of programming. A different world, strange and beautiful. Over the course of videos in this section, you'll learn what partial application and currying are, and the first step is the biggest. It's here that we examine function application and why we'd want to take control of it. The higher order functions we wrote in section 2 are too demanding. We'll use our newfound knowledge to take higher order functions to an even higher level with partial application. They will become simpler to write, easier and more flexible to use. And then we'll write our own implementation of the curry function, so when we're coding in our own programs, we don't have to rely on rewriting detailed curry logic into every function or having to rely on the library. We'll wrap up this section by using map, filter, and reduce with curry functions to get a feel for the ways we'll be able to use our curry utility to improve our already impressive higher order array functions. Now we'll move on to the first video in this section. What does partial application and currying mean? We'll discuss not only what the terms partial application and curry mean, but also what they mean for us as programmers and what they mean for functional programming in general. In this video, we'll look at arity, which is basically just the number of parameters a function has. It's defined arguments. What happens when we call a function? It sounds silly, we know that the function runs, but is this always what we want? Why does a function run, even if it doesn't have all of its arguments? When a function is ran, it's a total application of the function to its inputs. We'll look at partial application and why it's different. And finally, we'll look at currying and how the term curry differs from the term partial application. As we just said, arity refers to the number of parameters that a function takes, the number of parameters defined in the function's declaration. Functions in JavaScript are veridic, meaning they can take a variable number of arguments. Their arity doesn't prevent us from calling a function with more or less arguments than it expects. A function that expects one argument is called unary. Note, we are able to get the arity of a function by checking the length property value of the function. The functions in this slide will all return their arity as their output. So this function returns one. Even if we pass in two arguments, it returns the number one. One is its arity. Here is a function with two defined parameters. The binary function length property value is 2 because its arity is 2. We call these binary because binary means 2. A function that takes three arguments we can call ternary. Like the ternary operator, it takes three inputs. And notice that all these code snippets we're calling are being passed incorrect amount of arguments, but they still return their length as the number of parameters defined rather than the number of actual arguments passed in. Extraneous input values can be collected using the rest operator or in the arguments object. They don't affect the arity. If we were to create a function with no arguments, which would either be a pure function and return a constant value or impure and have side effects, we would call that function a nullary, as it takes no inputs. Functions taking two or more arguments are polyadic. When all parameters of a function have values, the function can be applied over its arguments. We typically say running the function. In math and functional programming, we could call this a total application of the function to its terms. In JavaScript, every time we call a function, it is a total application. Even if we didn't supply enough input values, total application happens. In the previous section, we discussed that every function has a scope. The values passed as input to the function are bound to variables, terms, within that scope. It's called the lexical scope, by the way. Any parameters that aren't passed in values when the function is called are bound to the value of undefined. There are situations where this behavior is desirable, such as in the examples from the previous section where we set default parameter values, but in general, running any operation with undefined bound to a value is going to give undesired results. It's good to note that when we set default values to parameters, they don't count towards the function.length property. In JavaScript, the function above looks like it is turning taking three inputs, but it's binary according to its length property. 
So the point to take away is when we call this with 0, 1, 2, or even 200 arguments, it is totally applied in JavaScript. The entire function runs. Partial application, on the other hand, would be more intelligent. If a function has an arity of 3 and we call it with two arguments, two inputs, the function could bind those two input values to the appropriate values within that function's scope. But it need not run the function yet. It could defer execution and wait until we pass the final argument in. So in partial application, a function that didn't have all its parameters bound would return a new function with a lower arity. So it takes less arguments because some are already partially applied. In this example, which won't work with regular JavaScript, by the way, the function partial app doesn't run or totally apply until all its arguments are present. When it is called for the first time with the value 100, that argument is bound to a1, and it returns a new function that doesn't take an a1 argument as it already has a value bound at a1, the value 100. The new function only expects two more arguments before it can run. So we could call that new function with another argument, and it would bind that value to a2. Part 1 is a binary function. It only takes two arguments, but we gave it one, so we get back a unary function, part 2. It only takes one argument which we then call with the value 30. The input value 30 is bound to a3, and the function called part2. The terms a1 and a2 are pre-bound to values 120 in the part2 function. So part3 isn't a function, it's just the string value boom. And we call part2, we pass in enough information that partial app could be totally applied over its complete arguments. We could have gotten the same result by calling partial app with all three arguments in the first place, or calling function part one with two input values instead of one. We only get back functions when we don't give all the arguments. It's like when you're at a fancy ice cream shop. Sometimes they give you ice cream with syrup and strawberries already on top, but if they only gave you ice cream at first, no syrup or strawberries, you'd wait until you got your toppings before eating, running the function. And we've seen this sort of logic done ad hoc already when we wrote our own map filter and reduce functions in the previous section. So now I'm afraid I need to blow your mind a bit. The example above is also known as currying. Yes, currying is a form of partial application where the function only takes one input value at a time. In some functional programming languages like Haskell, calling a function with two arguments actually just partially applies one value and then partially applies the next value. All functions in Haskell are curried by default. While curry traditionally means partially applying one argument at a time to a function, in JavaScript most curry implementations will allow you to pass one or more input values into a curried function, and that's how this course will be taught as well. If you did want to restrict this, there are libraries such as Ramda and Folktale.js that have utilities to prevent functions from applying to more arguments at a time than you'd like ignoring extra passed-in arguments. Folktale has nullary, unary, binary, turny. Ramda provides unary and binary, as well as nary, which lets you specify the number of arguments to restrict a function to accepting. So you might be asking, then, what's the difference between this curry and any other form of partial application? A more broad form of partial application would work like this. We have a function that makes sentences from combining who, what, where, and when. As before, we might want to call it with incomplete inputs. We might have the where, but not the who, what and when. So we add placeholders to stand in for that information. Meeting Town Hall is a partially applied version of normal funk, with the string Town Hall bound to the parameter named where. But the normal funk isn't executed yet. So we can call it with another two arguments we'd like to partially apply. Everyone is the who param, and invited is the what param. The double underscore is a placeholder for the when param. The constant invite all would be set as a partially applied version of the normal func that has the who, what, and where. All that is left is the when. We call invite all with Sunday 7 p.m., and it return the string everyone is invited to town hall on Sunday at 7 p.m. This snippet won't run without partial applications set up in the normal func first. So we'll learn how to use partial application utilities in the next video. The key takeaway here is that curry is partial application, but it's ordinal. Each argument is passed in left to right in the order they were defined on the original function. 
Partial application in the broader sense of the term could bind a value to any argument regardless if there are arguments to the left of it or if they've yet to be assigned to bound values.